Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show. I want to talk to you guys about finder scopes today. So, finder scopes is basically what, what the word means. It's a small telescope, usually, um, a small power telescope that is on your main telescope to help you find stuff. And that's why they call it a finder scope. Now, let me start from um, the worst to some of the better ones. Now, I don't have every model. Okay, uh, this is uh, a five by 24 um, finder scope and uh, with a bracket. But what that means is magnifies it five times and it's a 24 millimeter lens, just like the same as a telescope uh, type of thing. Um, these are really the worst kind, the most basic kind that comes with the most cheapest telescopes ones up to like two hundred dollars you might even get this type of finder scope really these are almost garbage the only object that you might um, find it okay for it was probably the moon and that's probably it um, so if you see a telescope with this type of finder scope that is probably one reason to just forget about it because it usually means that everything else on the telescope could be inferior and it's probably not even going to be worth getting. So again, 5x24 is on the cheapest end. Probably, I would say, just bypass it. Now, the next one is the one that I just uh, got rid of. Uh, I didn't need it. But anyway, it's a 6x30. Now, it's a little bit better. It magnifies it six times instead of five. Not a big deal compared to this guy. And it's just a little bit wider using um, a 30 millimeter lens instead of this guy's 24. So again, that one's barely acceptable. And sometimes the cheap, cheapy ones will have like a lens, like a plastic lens. Some of the better ones, uh, might be a decent uh, real lens made out of glass, but again, it's barely acceptable. Usually those type of scopes are not on the cheapest ones, but like one step up. I would probably say, uh, well, if, the, if everything else is okay, it probably can be okay, but you'll probably still need to upgrade the finder scope, uh, you know, if it comes with a 6x30 to something a little bit better. So let's just get rid of those. Now this guy here is a little different. This is a Coronado um, and it's a Soul Ranger. So basically this guy here is only for looking at the sun. Uh, it's a finder scope as well. It just has a little pinhole at the front and then it projects a white, um, the sun at the back and that's when you know the image is centered. But again, you, you only find this with a, you know solar telescope so but I thought I'd show that to you guys um, the next one up is or actually I'll show you this guy too. so the next ones up I would say is like the red dot finders they're becoming really popular now uh, manufacturers are giving them with uh, your entry-level uh, reflectors, refractors, you know, anything in the $200 range, $300 range, maybe up to $400 range, you're getting uh, a red dot finder now most of the time, which is a lot better than the 5x24 finder I first showed you and the 6x30. Um, and there's different qualities of these red dot finders. Now this one is a basic one and there's different models. Every company um, has red dot finders. Uh, of course, I can't show you every single, you know, 20 different kinds, but some of them, the glass is kind of colored like red um, plastic lens type of thing. Now, it doesn't magnify. These ones actually just put a dot on, like, on the window. And basically, when you're looking through your telescope, you just want to find the dot, put it on what object you're looking at through the eye. Your, your eye and it just superimposes that on the sky. So you kind of know exactly 
where you're pointing. Of course, you still have to align your main scope with this, uh, with your any finder scope. You have to align them both. So there are cheap quality ones starting at like twenty dollars. Again, uh, you know some are good, some are okay, and some are great. Uh, like this one here is okay, and usually they do have a button or two where you can change up and down, left and right, where the dot is in comparison to that window. So some are okay. Uh, I would say if you're buying the, you know, the $20 one, you know, those are the cheaper ones. It's better than these ones, but it's still not great. You know, this is a better version of it. It's just a better quality uh, type, uh, has a bigger window or bigger glass. And instead of a dot, you can make it a, a, a different dot. It can blink. It can it could be like an X, so you can just change the dot to a few different things, and it's a metal construction instead of all plastic. So it comes in different versions uh, and different manufacturers. You know, sometimes these red dot ones can, I think, go up to like seventy, eighty dollars. So uh, basically, you get what you pay for, uh, type of thing. So if you're looking, if you have a cheaper telescope, maybe just get a red dot finder. Um, you know, in the $30 range, it should be okay, especially if you're just new and you're only going to be looking at the planets from a light polluted zone. Um, it'll be fine just to lo locate this, uh, you know, sun, moon, and planet, sun with a solar filter, of course. But Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, uh, the moon, uh, it'll be okay, even the most basic red dot finders. Now, there is There is a couple others that are like 8 by 40 so it's just, I would say, uh, the 8 by 40 is just one step down from here. Uh, the next step up, uh, sometimes you have these, this is a 8 by 50 uh, finder scope, sometimes they come in 9 by 50 which is basically the exact same thing. This one is a straight through model. Sometimes they have one that has like a 90 degree. So when you're looking upwards, you know, you don't have to look at a weird angle. You could just, of course, be uh, looking at almost like a refractor diagonal type of thing. It's just easier. So this one is of a good quality. 50 millimeter lens. And this one's 8 by 50 or it could be 9 by 50. This is the most common 8 or 9 by 50 finder scope. Now... They're very good. Usually they come in, uh, you know, with the slightly more expensive telescopes um, type of thing. Um, so again, it just depends. And there's even a version that's correct image. So when, instead of looking through it and it's the images flipped over, inverted, some of them, of course, it's going to cost more uh, with a 90 degree or 45 degree angle will have the correct I image. Uh, so you don't see that flipped. But it's really for the nighttime is really not that big of a deal. The only time it might be a, a big of a deal is if you're looking at a star chart and it's telling you that the object you want is on the left side of this star. And of course, if you don't have the correct image one, it, you know, and when you're looking through it, you gotta remember, you gotta be going the opposite way because it's, it's inverted that image. Um, so that's about it. But these are good finder scopes uh, to you. Now, what I think are the best kind are these two here. So one is called a ride gel. And again, it's a reflex one. It puts like a bullseye. Uh, again, it has a window and you're just looking through it, superimposing it on the sky. Uh, it does not magnify. So wherever you put that bullseye is, and your telescope is, um, uh, both of them are aligned, is where it's gonna be pointing. So there's no more guessing. Sometimes with these, because you're magnifying the image, uh, now you don't always know exactly where was that star or because you're so much closer. Uh, so it's uh, harder to tell exactly where you are in the sky. Some people use one of these and combined with one of this. So you get the zero power bullseye. And you put it exactly where you want and then you magnify it eight, nine, ten times, whatever your finder scope is. Uh, to get a little bit closer. Um, that can work when you're hunting the, fa the faint fuzzies, what they call it, the deep sky stuff. 
But anyway, this one is a Raijo. I like it. Um, uses a watch battery type of thing. And it'll probably that battery lasts for probably five years at least. You can make the bullseye up, down, left, and right. You can change that. Uh, the, this one was the, the original. This one's called the Telrad. It's a lot bigger, as you can see. Um, but both of them, as you can see, are actually, uh, a lot of people don't realize that, are actually about the same height. Actually, the ride gel is just a quarter of an inch taller. But besides that, they're almost the same height. So, but the tail ride here, look how much longer it is. So I think um, the ride gel is probably better in most instances. It's just smaller. And what's also neat about this one, it comes with two bases. So if you have two different telescope, put a base on each and just swap out the finder whenever you're using the different one. Um, you could also buy extra bases for the tail rack. Um, but of course, I think they're about uh, $13, $14 each and you kind of look through it like that. So again, it puts a bullseye, but the tail rack has a three ring where this one only has a two ring bullseye. But anyway, usually what I do is put this guy on a larger scope, put this guy on a smaller scope. But you could use this guy in a bigger scope too. But I would say this is really all I, I use. I just use one of these two, and depending what different scope I have. And then what I normally do is I would probably either use a 32 millimeter, two inch eyepiece, or a 56 millimeter, uh, two inch eyepiece for my low power. And depending what scope I, I have, I can, that could be as low as like 13 to 15 power, which is basically almost the same, uh, almost, almost the same as a finder scope. So that's what I normally do. I almost never use traditional um, type of finder scopes at all. I normally use one of these two and then put a really low power eyepiece and find it that way. But a lot of people use the next best combination is to use one of these two with a traditional uh, finder scope and you got the best of both worlds. Now, if you don't, I mean, these could be expensive too. 80 to 100 bucks new. You could find them maybe on the used market, 40 to 50 bucks. Um, but if your budget is, let's say, lower or you just have a, a less quality or a lower price telescope and you're frustrated with all these type of junky finder scopes and you just want one finder scope to end it all so you can find stuff easier I would say get one of these two whichever one you prefer and you'll be good you'll to never need to buy another finder scope if you get one of these two guarantee it um, now they're not so cheap now this guy's about 72 to 75 Canadian new same with this guy, it might be up to $80 uh, new. Uh, you could find them mm, once in a blue moon on the used market, not all the time, um, but that's probably one of the best accessories that you could buy. Buy the finder scope, it will make your life a lot easier if you can find the things in the sky. Because remember, those things in the sky are dim, they're very far away, so don't skimp out on finder scopes and make it much harder to find. So one of the reasons why a lot of people uh, give up on the hobby because they can't find the objects. So just get, if you want a finder scope that's going to eliminate it, get one of these two. Learn how to use it and align it. Once you look through it and then you superimpose that bullseye onto the sky, your scope is there. Uh, and then that's it. Put your low power eyepiece in, start looking. Um, it probably, it works basically all the time. It just, it won't even take you that long to get used to it. Anyway guys, this, these are finder scopes. These two are the best I consider. Um, you could also do one of these if it's a good quality, but I just prefer that. And end of story, it's perfect. Joe Jaguar, out. Comment, like, and subscribe.